Well, uh, this is the second time I've tried tried to record this video um, because I had the dreaded GoPro uh, corruption issue. So I've been using the GoPro Hero 7 for a while, in fact since about 2019, and it, it chose last week uh, to record uh, for 21 minutes and after five minutes of you know footage the f the the frame just froze so after a lot of um and ah in i've bought the dji action osmo you know, osmo action 4 which i'm filming on now um haven't really played about with it too much so i don't know what the quality of this is going to be like anyway that's not the subject of the video um Obviously, given that I'm not uh, not really a big you not a big YouTuber, obviously, um, and I have a full-time job, I'm not going to be doing bike reviews, you know, left, right, and centre as much as I'd as as much as I'd like to. Um, but the one re one bike bike review I can do, which I haven't of which I haven't actually done yet, is of of this my 2024. Uh, R1300GS. So I've had this since um, about I think about the 15th of December uh, but due to the weather uh, and stuff going on over over Christmas uh, I never got round to riding it until early January. So since January um, let's have a look on the TFT. Um, I've done 6,524 miles um so this has mostly been uh you know just your, your regular bike meets um some uh using it for some blood using it for using it for some blood some blood biking duties uh a few ride outs with your friends uh but 4400 miles of it was uh, a trip down to greece uh with my brother-in-law uh and back uh, via you know Germany, Austria, you know, Italy, uh, and then France on the way back, and then a trip to Scotland. So I wouldn't have reviewed this at the start of owning it, but I figured now is a good a good time. So for, uh, f for context, this is my third GS. I've had two 1250 GSAs, uh, a 2019 HP Rally Edition, and uh, a 2023 uh, trophy edition so both the adventure um, when I wasn't really looking to buy this you know in fairness when this was when this was announced um, my enthusiasm for buying it was eh, I, you know I didn't really have any any need to I'd only had my um, my I'd, I'd only had my trophy edition for nine months and I'd done 9,000 miles I was very you know, very happy with it um, but the dealer you know, Halliwell Jones of Chester which is where I'm on my way to now for this for the six the 6,000 mile service um, made me an offer I couldn't refuse so so yeah um, one moment so yeah um, like I say, that was that was the only reason. That was the only reason for actually buying it. Um, was very happy with the twelve, the twelve and fifty. Wasn't massively keen on the looks of this when it first came out, uh, but then I saw it in the in the flesh and I thought, okay, I like that. My my thoughts on how the twelve, uh, the, the thirteen hundred GSA looks is probably a, an in, an entirely different you know video. Um, so yeah, I ended up with this late December. So things that I've done to this since I bought it. Uh, let's start start with that. Um, so I'll stop in a moment and find somewhere to pull over uh, and just sort of show you the things that I've the things that I've you know altered, changed, added to it. Because one thing that did surprise me was that uh, a lot of the accessories off the 1250 wouldn't fit this, which 
I say it surprised me. I guess I was and I wasn't wasn't surprised. Um, so yeah, um, let's let's have a look at that now. Okay, so <clears throat> assuming I've set set the camera up right, this is just a bit of a walk around video of what things I've changed, added, etc. On this, so starting at the front, um, the the your headlight protector there um, that was bought by a chap called uh, bought off off of a chap called Kevin Masquey I think his name is um, I had one on my 12 1250 GS um, and he made that one for this um, I've also added might be able to see it better from around here the pyramid plastics fender air extender um the machine art moto one wasn't available at the time um here which you might not be able to see that easily um the these are the vun i think these are the wunderlich um uh radiator guards this bike actually doesn't have any um I assume only the adventure has them, but I was very, very surprised that this didn't didn't have any. Um, I've added these on the side. I'm not sure how I feel about them. Um, time will tell. I did have them. I did have these side pods professionally wrapped, um, but it started started to peel off pretty quickly um, after after I had it done um so not sure not sure how i how i feel about that obviously i've got the sw motec crash bars not really a lot to say about these um moving up to here um obviously i have the carpy ride w702 um and a wunderlich uh you know sunshade which if i'm honest i don't really think that actually does anything <laughs> um obviously i've got the wunderlich bar bag i did have the sw motec tank ring and the sw motec pro city bag but it was just too big on the adventure it was great but on this it was just too big if if i'm honest with you um so i changed it just just for this and that works fine um, in here you can't really see it obviously because my phone's in there but I have the Hornig uh, wireless okay this are this wagon's gonna drive right past me in here I've got the 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 Hornig wireless wi wireless charging pad um, which works very well um, that's all up front um, moving back a little bit I've got the the Lone Rider uh, moto pegs. The standard ones on this bike, because it's not the Adventure or and not the Enduro pack. Um, strangely, the pegs were absolutely tiny. Like they were almost, I'd say, nearly half half the width of the Pillion ones, which I find utterly crazy. Um, the lone, lone, rider, lone Rider pannier racks, which um, are shaped like the scaffolding on the 1250 G GSA. So any of any of the panniers that would have, you know, fitted that would will work on there. Um, I've got the Lone Rider Moto bags, um, which work absolutely fine. Um, and then finally at the back. The Lone Rider Moto case, which uh, only arrived recently, um, but you know, so far, absolutely loving it. Um, it's I, you know, managed to managed to follow the instructions and actually code it to the BMW key, so that works fine. Um, it, apart from that, I think that is it for things that I've done to the bike. Um, oh, the Wunderlich side stand extender, because this bike leans over much further than than the old bike, or at least I'm pretty certain it does. But yeah, that's that's all that's all I've done. That's all I've done to it. I don't have any current plans to 
to add any you know anything else on there i would like a black a exhaust um but time will tell that's a lot of money so yeah um that is my r r 1300 gs um she's filthy but absolutely loving it so what has it been like owning this for the last seven months eight months um well there is a video on my channel i did have i did have uh, quite a serious issue back in february um where the bike caught fire um <laughs> is the only mild way to put it um which was due to the starter relay you know issue um i won't go into too much detail that's all explained in another video but um but yeah uh, the starter relay shorted out uh the bike started to started to you know smolder uh, and smoke and um and yeah uh, you know halliwell jones um you know, motorrad were fantastic as were bmw uk uh but yeah so what do i think of the bike aside from that little um you know hiccup shall we shall we say my first thoughts you know jumping on it feels like feels feels just like it feels just like a gs uh the, there wasn't really anything ergonomically that you know struck me as you know massively changed um maybe the seat being narrower um and obviously the tank because obviously this isn't the adventure so um i was expecting that obviously it weighs less than my adventure so it would be unfair to compare it to the 1250 gs non-ad adventure um very nimble very light by comparison obviously um and yeah really flickable the you know the you know running in miles um very happy the thing is like a rocket which again relatively speaking there's probably ktm owners thinking you should try the try the you should try the thir 1390 super adventure then you'll then you'll then you'll know what uh, then you'll know what you know rocket like is but for a for a gs i noticed immediately a pretty significant difference uh from riding this to the 12 to the to the 1250 um you can definitely tell the increased you know torque um i'm not i'm not the quickest rider in in the world but you know i like to think i can i i like i like to think that i that i that i that i can hustle a gs stay there mr mercedes man um and yeah i noticed immediately that when you wind it on especially in dynamic pro mode it definitely goes more i've probably had three or four maybe five um you know little sort of light light bars moments you know, head shakes whatever you want to whatever you want to call it let's just join the motorway without getting hit yeah so on both of the gsa's that i had i had a few few moments you know winding it on over a little crest it you know the bars went light um but nothing you know massively significant this you know second gear it wants to lift you can feel it wanting to lift and that's without any luggage on no no panniers no top box my partner not on the back i've had a few light light front end moments in third when uh over, overtaking cars and with my, uh, my partner on the back um i have to say i've had to adjust my riding slightly um because it will try and lift it it will try and lift the front end pretty frequently but you know others have you know, others have commented on that uh the chap from lone rider um who owns one of these he said the exact same thing build quality build quality i can't really comment on that too much because i haven't owned it long enough i don't i wouldn't say the 
general fit and finish is any better than the 1250 you know some of the wiring like here for the uh, for the blind spot you know stuff the ends of the wires look a bit sort of cheap and nasty um, but I think that's just a sign of the times I will say though the coating on the engine and the swinging arm seems to be at least a significant improvement over the 1250 um, time will tell obviously it's too late it's sorry it's too early to actually make uh, a judgment on on that um, I ride this in all you know weathers barring sort of the deepest ends of you know winter when there's when there's ice and uh, you know salt on the ground but it's ridden in it's you know ridden in almost every month of of the year in rain um, etc so will be interesting to see how how she holds up I will one thing I've actually noticed is uh, the SW Motec crash bars that I've got some of the welds are actually starting to rust which is not a good sign but obviously that's nothing to do with the actual the actual bike itself so so far no signs of corrosion etc um, wind protection this was the thing that I thought was probably going to be a bit of a step back both of my 1250s I had the big huge Puig touring screen on there with the winglet and I tried it in the high, the low, the medium, and I could just not get rid of, um, you know, helmet sort of buffering, um, which I never had on my uh, my Triumph Air Explorer. Uh, I had a 1200 Air Explorer. That was absolutely f uh, phenomenal. However, having come to this, expecting it to be incredibly bad by comparison and obviously not much of a you know frontal area by comparison to the ad to the old ad adventure it's surprisingly good I don't get any help any helmet you know buffering now at all not a, not a single bit um, which I have to say I was incredibly surprised about and it's incredibly windy here on the M56 um, so apologies if the audio isn't great um, so yeah that surprised me um, in a good way F from a comfort point of view um, a lot of people seem to be saying that the standard rider seat on this is not as comfortable as on 1250 and I'm going to contradict myself a little bit here because I wanted to say the same thing and after having done you know, uh, you know England to Greece and back um, I, f I, f I feel like I can comment on the standard uh, the, the standard seat I think this is the standard height seat it is the heated seat so um, and while I was away I kept you know commenting to my brother-in-law I kept saying this seat is rock hard it's so uncomfortable and uh, but then when I got back I immediately the following day less than 12 hours after getting back into England went up to Scotland and did another 834 miles or you know something like that and one of my friends said to me well Paul the, the standard seat can't be that can't be that uncomfortable I said what do you mean he said well um, if you've just gone all the way to Greece and back and then immediately 12 hours later you've come up to Scotland with us it can't be that uncomfortable can it because surely if it was you would have been like no nope, that's it I'm, a, I'm having a rest I'm not getting back on that for a while and I thought yeah he's right I mean I you know after oh, after sort of you know 200 250 miles I need a break anyway I mean I don't tend to ride that long in one hit I tend I tend to break it up you know 100 miles 150 miles in one in one hit and then I think time for a coffee and a pee um, but he yeah 
So I don't actually think it is as it is as uncomfortable uh, as people think. But uh, you know, I don't know. Um, my gut wants to tell me that it is, but yeah, it just I don't know. I manage that sort of mileage, and we we were doing 250 to 300 miles a day every day. Um, in sort of temperatures ranging from you know 14 degrees C all the way up to 32 33 um, and I was fine you know I didn't have any any other aches other than my backside which you would expect after that sort of distance anyway so yeah in terms of comfort I, th I, th I do think there is an ever so slight bend in my knee that is a little bit more noticeable than when I had my 1250. It's not significant, but it, I do notice it because I do have, I, I do suffer from I don't, you know, sore knees, I suppose is the best way to describe it. Anyway, I'm waffling on. Um, creature comforts and tech. Um, if you have, if you have a fully loaded 1250 GSA with the touring pack, the dynamic pack, the comfort pack, like I did, you're not getting masses of extra, extra, extra tech in this. Um, obviously, you're obviously you're actually getting the electric screen if that's part of if you get the fully loaded version. This is. This version is fully loaded apart from the adaptive ride height because at 6 foot 2 and a 35 inch inside leg I don't need it so um, but apart from that I think it's pretty much got everything else you could want on it um, so yeah the electric screen very useful do you maybe want to be in the inside lane mate no no you want to be in the, the, the middle lane This is a pet peeve of mine. I spend a lot of time on motorways due to my blood biking, you know, stuff, and that really grips my shit. Anyway, so yeah, the tech. The electric screen, very handy, although I would say I'm not one who puts my screen up and down a lot, but if I do need to move it, it is very handy. The adaptive cruise control. I was if I'm honest I was thinking that that was going to be a bit of a gimmick um, I've never had it in a car uh, my car has regular regular cruise um, and I thought well how good can it be but coming back from Greece due to time restraints we had to mostly stay on the autostrada and the French toll roads so there was a lot of motorway riding and if, if I'm honest, the adaptive cruise was really helpful. It can be a little bit sudden in its slowing, slowing down. I've changed the mode from dynamic to something else. Uh, you know, it, it's the, 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 adaptive, the adaptive cruise has two modes, which I think one is like a sort of gentle, um, you know, acceleration when you actually pull out to overtake and the other is a more dynamic you know one and I've tried both modes and if I'm honest it's pretty much the same in both if it it does seem to pick up a car uh, and slow you down quite suddenly which at times is a little bit unnerving but that's probably just me getting getting used to it um, well being overtaken by an Arctic because everyone's in the outside lane, like me. Yeah, so, um, I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, so the, the adaptive cruise, it is useful, I think. Um, but yeah, I think I need to maybe, I don't think I've really used it enough um, to get the best out of it. Blind spot monitoring, I have to say, again, I didn't think I would notice that you know everybody thinks well I check my mirrors and um, check my mirrors and my blind spots you know often so well, I'm, I'm a pretty good rider I don't need that um, generally speaking it's 
you know, it's it's gone unnoticed. But there have been a couple of times where maybe I've been a little bit complacent and thought, right, I, I want to move out. And I've just and as I've glanced in the mirror, I've seen it, seen seen the amber light lit up and thought, oh crap, yeah, there there's a car there. Um, so I would say I'd rather have it than not have it. It's the only bike I've ever had that's had it on. Um, so yeah, it's pretty good. Aside from those three things, the screen, the adaptive cruise and the blind spot, um, there isn't really anything extra tech on this, that I, th uh, uh, at least that I can think of anyway. Um, that this has got that my 12 that my 1250 didn't um, so yeah from a, from a passenger point of view I think I need to give this a bit of a wide berth um, from a passenger point of view um, my partner has has been on the back um, we went, we went down down to Donington last weekend for the World Superbike Race. Um, so we did about 200-ish miles. Um, we went over Snake, sorry, Woodhead Pass, um, down the motorway, back via Ashbourne, over the Cat and Fiddle. Um, so a mixture of roads. From her point of view, I asked her, what's it like? And she said, feels, feels exactly the same as the old bike. Um, now I know some people, I know the Missenden Flyers wife said that she, it, it was harder for her to reach uh, the grab handles, um, which I can't really comment on because my partner, she doesn't hold on to them at all. In fact, she doesn't hold on to anything at all. Um, but I guess that's probably due to being a horse rider when she was younger. But yeah, from her point of view, she hasn't really noticed anything significantly different. We are due to go away to Spain. We're doing the Picos um, on the, f well, we leave on the 4th of August. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing the Picos Mountains. So I guess on a longer ride, we will find out, but yeah. One thing she did notice actually, and now that reminds me, is on the 1250, I never really noticed a massive difference with the suspension, changing it from road to dynamic mode. I, I could tell, but it wasn't significant. Um, it's, it's hard to uh, explain, but if you have a 12, if you have a 1250 GSA, with the dynamic suspension, you'll know what I mean. You can definitely tell that road mode is a bit more, you know, squidgy and plush, and it rides rides over the the you know the rough UK roads um, quite well. Dynamic is still not bad, but you can you there there were times where I had it in dynamic mode and forgot about it until I went over a particularly bumpy road and then thought ah I'll, I was in I was in dynamic mode this bike the difference between road mode and dynamic mode is significantly significantly different in my opinion anyway if I switch it from road to dynamic I can tell the difference instantly it is very noticeable um, to the point that dynamic mode on anything other than a very smooth you know road is just a bit too crashy and even she noticed it so i did ask her um back when i had my 1250 if she could tell the, if she could tell the difference between the um road and dynamic sus uh, suspension mode and she couldn't she said she couldn't really she couldn't really tell any difference and as soon as i put this into dynamic suspension mode um she was like bloody hell that oh it is crashing around everywhere 
So, long story short, she didn't like it. Um, so, I must admit, I don't use road mode very often. Uh, sorry, I don't use don't use dynamic mode for these for these for the uh, suspension very often. Um, that covers most of the basics. Um, like 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 I said in the walk around video about the what I've done, what I've sort of changed, etc. I haven't really changed anything significant in terms of comfort, ergonomics, etc. It's mostly been you know tech and. Uh, mostly tech and luggage, um, that sort of that sort of thing. Um, this is still running the ori the original the original tyres, um, which are the Metzler Torrents Next Two, and they're fine. They are fine in the wet, fine in the dry. They're not my favourite favourite. They're not my favourite tyre. There, I mean, I'm no, I'm no tire, I'm no tire air, no tire air expert anyway. Um, but I can usually tell a tire that I like, and these have got a predictable, you know, um, you know, sort of, sort of curve on them, um, and they're ab absolutely, absolutely fine. But they're not wearing. They are not wearing at all. I literally did. Well, I've done six and a half thousand miles and the rear tire in the middle still has eight millimeters of tread left and on the front I think it's three mil um, and I just I'm not used to that I normally run either the the Metzler Rotec 01s um, or the Michelin Pilot Road 5 or 6s and if I do a lot of motorway they are squared off feel awful after like 3,000 miles especially the, especially the rear but these just don't seem to want to die um, I have had to plug the rear because I got a massive screw screw through it um, but I'm kind of torn on the one hand I want a tyre that is a bit more you know sticky um, but at the same time these feel fine you know they're just fine for enough for normal riding and I just can't bring myself to swap them out yet when there's so much left on them um, but we'll 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 see I have a feeling once I get back from Spain the um, the rear will be uh, sorry the front will be ready to be replaced so yeah that is generally speaking my review of the 12 uh, the 1300 gs um i need to get used to this whole riding and talking thing because yeah it would appear that i'm not good at doing both at the same time um yeah i love it i wouldn't change it i certainly won't be certainly won't be looking to upgrade to the third the 1300 ad adventure mm, for two reasons number one i can't afford it and number two at the moment i think the 1300 adventure looks like an abomination if if i'm being honest there's no angle that i look at that bike and think oh i, I like that so this will be staying uh, by the end of august it will have about eight and a half thousand miles on it um, be interesting to see um, how how it'll be interesting to see if I you know want to do any any more up any more upgrades on it. Uh, I'm still toying with the idea of changing changing the seat, but at the moment I just can't you know I can't really just can't really justify it. So. Yeah, um, I do now have the Lone Rider top box. No, I don't need. I don't need to say that, Paul. So, if there's anything I've missed in the review, um, there probably is because I've just spent the last half an hour just rambling aimlessly in into my helmet. 
Um, but if there's anything I've missed that anyone wants to know the, ar the answer to, um, happy to help. But yeah, I love it. It's staying and I'm looking forward to many more, many more happy miles on it. Ah, one thing I did just think of that is quite important for me to mention. Um, a lot of people say that going from a 1250 to a 1300, and it would start raining, wouldn't it? Um, that when they've gone from a 1250 to uh, a 1300, that the gearbox is a massive improvement in terms of the smooth the smoothness. Um, now, having had two 1250s, um, I go on then. I always found the gearboxes on them pretty good you know they're not obviously they're a little bit agricultural um, but but yeah the um, I never really had an issue with them a lot of people said yo you you can't you you can't use the quick shifter from first to second can't use the quick shifter from second down into first and I, on both of my both of my 1250s um, I used to do just that without any issues at all I mean obviously there was the odd fluffed the odd fluff gear change but generally speaking um, I found it incredibly smooth now on the first of my 1250s I had three complete engines in that which is an, an, another story um, nothing to do with my riding I, I might add um, and yeah I never had an issue so everyone said oh the 1300 is far far smoother um, but because I didn't have any issues with the old bike um, it wasn't really something that I was expecting and if I'm honest I'm going to be con I'm going to be a little bit controversial and say I don't think it is any smoother at least not the way I ride it um, the lever is adjusted you know absolutely fine um, it's not too high too low etc et and I think that it's actually clunkier um, and at first I thought well it needs running in etc um, so it'll probably it'll probably it'll probably get slightly better and if I'm honest it hasn't um, I get more clunky downshifts using the using the auto using the auto blipper than I did on my tw on either of my 1250s um, and I like I say I would say well it's down to my riding but like I say I've done six and a half thousand miles um, and I don't I don't find it bad but I just don't find it as smooth as the 1250 now I did watch a video uh, of a chap I can't think of his name now but he was speculating that that could be due to the fact that a lot of the press bikes um, and a lot of the bikes given for review were the Tramun Tramutana, the green version, with the Option 719 kit on, which obviously you get the billet, uh, you get the billet gear lever. Whereas the standard bike, um, the gear lever on this is plastic. Uh, it's probably some sort of like glass reinforced nylon plastic but it's plastic and it has a lot of flex in it uh, both up and down and side to side so I'm wondering if that could be anything to do with it um, I don't know but it might be um, so I am considering uh, the Gilles uh, the Gillies I'm not sure how you say it they do uh, a set which is the gear lever and the brake the, the rear brake lever um, I might try those but it's I mean I think the set is 257 pound which is so it's a bit of an expensive gamble although shiny shiny um, a reason to have something else you know shiny on it and also I have seen several photos of the gear lever snapped where 
I don't know if the person riding it has been a bit heavy footed but it does concern me that the gear lever on a £22,000 bike is plastic so yeah um, there we go